Coming up today, President Park and Hay carries out a partial cabinet reshuffle, replacing her finance, interior, trade and education ministers. Canadian diplomats get access to a Korean-Canadian pastor sentenced to life in prison by North Korea. Despite his situation, Im hyun Su is said to be in good spirits. First, Sepp Blatter and Michelle Platini have been banned from football for eight years by FIFA. Both say they will appeal the ban. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, December 22nd here in Seoul. Thank you ever so much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, President Park Geun-hye has carried out a long-awaited reshuffle of her ministers. Many of the outgoing ministers have decided to run for a seat in the National Assembly in general elections set for April next year. For more on the President's New Look Cabinet, Song ji Son reports. Time was running out and a president could not afford to wait another day. With no progress being made at the National Assembly on bills aimed at reviving the economy, President Park Geun-hye on Monday announced a cabinet reshuffle involving five ministries and one agency. She tapped former Transportation Minister Yu Il-ho for a new Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister. The presidential office says that Yu, an experienced bureaucrat, will help revitalize the economy with his expertise and carry out reforms that the government has been pushing for. Yu said he will maintain policy direction consistent with his predecessor, Choi kyung hwan but will first have to undergo a parliamentary confirmation hearing. Vice Finance Minister Chu kyung hwan was promoted to Minister of Trade, Industry and Energy, with current Trade Minister Yoon Sang-jik expected running next year's general election. Yi jun sik an engineering professor with more than 20 years of teaching experience, was named Deputy Prime Minister for Social Affairs and Minister of Education. Hong yun sik from the Office for Government Policy Coordination at Prime Minister's Secretariat, was named Minister of the Interior. Ruling party lawmaker Kang eun hee was chosen to lead the Minister of Gender Equality and Family. Kang, a teacher turned entrepreneur, also served as spokesperson of the Senuri Party and is expected to facilitate employment of women. President Park also selected lawyer Chong Young Hoon to lead Korea's Anti Corruption and Civil Rights Commission. Overall, the president opted to appoint officials with proven track records and experience in their respective fields that will be able to assist her as she enters her fourth year in office. The new cabinet members will get right down to business to wrap up the year and prepare for next year's plan. Song Ji Sun, Arirang News. Now, it has emerged that Canadian diplomats were allowed last week to visit a Korean-Canadian pastor who was sentenced to life in prison with hard labour in North Korea. CNN reported Monday that two officials from Canada's embassy in Seoul, along with an interpreter, spoke with Im hyun Su in Pyongyang last Friday. The official said Im was healthy and in good spirits. It was the first time consular officials were granted access to him since he was arrested by the regime in February when he was doing charity work at a nursing home and orphanage in the north. However, North Korea's Supreme Court sentenced the pastor early this month to a lifetime of labor for crimes against the state. In July, Im gave a press conference admitting to the subversion charges. Although we must say the admittance is considered unreliable as others who have previously been detained in North Korea have said that they were forced to make false confessions under duress. South Korea's constitutional court will issue a verdict on the constitutionality of the 1965 Korea-Japan Claims Settlement Agreement that Tokyo claims settled all issues of compensation to victims of forced labor during Japan's colonial rule of Korea. The court is expected to announce its verdict on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Korea time. The case has been pending in court for six years since complainant Eun Jae, whose father died because of forced labor with Japanese companies, filed a constitutional appeal in late 2000. Nine. Now, E says, Article 2, Clause 1 of the 1965 Claims Agreement, which says the problems concerning property, rights and interests of individuals have been settled completely, is unconstitutional. 
Now, public schools in the U.S. state of California may introduce history lessons about Japan's sexual enslavement of women before and during World War II. Historians estimate that around 200,000 women and girls, many of whom were Korean, were coerced into sexual slavery by the Japanese army in the early to mid 20th century. Guan jung -ho has this report. The California Department of Education has proposed teaching its high school students about the issue of Japan's wartime sexual slavery. Using the phrase comfort women to describe the victims, it's included in the draft framework of history and social sciences for students in grade 10, aged 15 to 16. In chapter 15 of the draft, entitled World History, Culture and Geography, The Modern World, it says the issue is to be taught as an example of institutionalized sexual slavery and emphasizes that it is one of the largest cases of human trafficking in the 20th century. It also goes on to say that estimates on the total number of victims vary, but most experts argue that hundreds of thousands of women were forced into these situations during Japanese occupation. This is the result of last month's public hearing, where we argued to the Education Board the need to include this issue of Japanese wartime sexual slavery. Members of the public were invited to comment on the draft until February, before the curriculum is finalized by the State Board of Education in May. The Japanese newspaper Sankei Shimbun reported on Monday that the Japanese government will make efforts to convince the board to either take out the content or reduce it. They are arguing that the issue doesn't qualify as slavery, saying that the women served as volunteers. Tokyo's refusal to claim responsibility is an ongoing source of conflict between Korea and Japan, as most of the victims were Korean. Seoul and the surviving victims are still seeking a formal apology and reparations from the Japanese government for the atrocities. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. Now, outgoing FIFA president Sepp Blatter has vowed to fight after the FIFA Ethics Committee uh, banned him and UEFA president Michel Platini from football activities for eight years. The bans follow a probe into a roughly two million US dollar disloyal payment made to Platini in 2011. Now, speaking at a press conference in Zurich with the plaster over his face, Blatter accused the committee of treating him like a punching bag. Michel Platini has said he will appeal the ban as well. The head of European football said he was at peace with his own conscience. Russia claims it's unable to get any information from the damaged black box of a Russian warplane shot down by Turkey almost a month ago to the day. An official from the Russian Air Force said attempts to get a read out of fl flight data had proven impossible because of internal damage. He added that all but three of the flight recorder's 16 microchips had been completely destroyed and that the others were badly damaged as well. The Kremlin had hoped information from the black box would have supported its version of what happened. The downing of the Russian warplane by Turkish jets on November 24th was the most serious confrontation between Russia and a NATO member state in half a century. Now they are the two words motorists love to hear, cheap gasoline. Thanks to a steep fall in the price of oil, a litre of gas in Korea is cheaper than the equivalent amount of mineral water. But scratch the surface a little deeper and you find that the drop in gas prices has not really kept pace with the slump in global oil prices. Not even close, in fact. Al Kim Minji has the details. A prolonged decline in global oil prices has pushed down prices at the pump. But here in Korea, they haven't been falling as quickly as local drivers would like. According to the Korean National Oil Corporation, the average price of gasoline for December stood at around $1.22 per litre, down 38 cents compared to last year. But here's the catch. In the same period, Dubai crude prices, which account for a majority of Korea's imports, dropped to about $35 a barrel this month from over $60 a year ago. Simply put, while global oil prices fell by more than 40 percent, gasoline in Korea dropped by just over 10 percent. So why the big difference? Experts point to a string of taxes levied on fuel. Before tax, gasoline is currently priced at just over 500 won, or roughly 40 cents per liter, which means it's cheaper than bottled water.
Ex-factory prices of gasoline have indeed fallen in line with global crude prices, but local consumers face transportation, road and education taxes, as well as a 10% value-added tax. Together, they make up about 60% of the final price. Since the tax is fixed, benefits from a drop in oil prices don't really show up for the consumer. In addition, gasoline and circulation in Korea is based on higher prices as it was bought and refined 93 days ago. Some experts have voiced the need for structural changes. There's a need to make the tax more elastic. When global oil prices go up, that means low-income households will be hit hard, so there should be different regulations for different income groups. But such changes won't be easy. Although critics have called for lower oil taxes, the government is unwilling to budge on what is a stable source of tax revenue, especially at a time when prices are so low. Kim min Arirang News. Now, staying with economic news, and Korea's household debt has climbed to a new record, topping more than 52,000 U.S. dollars per household on average. Shin Se-min has the details. The burden on Korean borrowers continues to surge, riding on the ever-increasing household debt that surpassed 1,000 trillion won, or 989 billion U.S. dollars, in the third quarter. As of March this year, the average Korean household was in the red by over $52,000, up 2.2 percent compared to the same period last year. Data by the Bank of Korea, Statistics Korea and the Financial Supervisory Service show that the increase is a result of more high-income earners purchasing homes on the back of cheaper borrowing costs. Overall, Koreans' income, along with their annual disposable income, rose, while the amount they borrowed also went up. As the burden of paying back principal and interest expand, more Koreans have also been putting their income towards some money they borrowed, about a quarter of their earnings. Now the financial debt to disposable income ratio stands at over 110 percent, the highest since the data was first collected in 2012. Breaking it down by age, those in their 50s accounted for the least increase, with their debt figure dropping 1.4 percent on year. Households with family members in their 30s and 40s have 68 and 70 percent debt, while those in their 60s or older have nearly half of that amount. The data also shows that those in their 60s and older posted the biggest increase, an indication that the growing population of Korea's silver citizens are becoming more economically active. According to the data, 64 percent of all Koreans are indebted, marking a drop of 1.6 percent. But the scale of the total median household debt spiked over 11 percent to $37,000, highlighting Korea's snowballing household debt, which posted the fastest growth in the third quarter this year since 2002. Shin Se-min, News. Now, Samsung has broken ground on a new drug manufacturing plant in the western city of Incheon. Korea's top conglomerate has vowed to take a bigger share in the lucrative biopharmaceutical industry. Kim Hyun-bin has the details. Samsung's Biologics revealed plans to invest $721 million in its facility in Songdo to become the largest contract manufacturing organization. President Park Geun-hye attended the groundbreaking ceremony on Monday, hosted by Samsung Group's pharmaceutical unit, Samsung Biologics, in the city of Incheon, west of Seoul. IT 산업의 성과에 안주하지 않고 바이오 의약품이라는 새로운 시장에 과감하게 뛰어든 도전과 혁신은 양질의 청년 일자리 창출과 전 후방 산업의 동반 성장에도 크게 기여하게 될 것입니다. President Park signaled out the biohealth industry as a core component of the creative economy, which will create high-value products and high-quality jobs. The completion of the Songdo facility alone is expected to produce 180,000 liters annually, surpassing that of Switzerland's Lanza Group and Germany's Beringer Ingelheim. If a third facility is completed by 2020, Samsung Biologics will be the world's leading CMO and become number one in terms of sales and profit. Samsung Biologics expects the global CMO market to reach $7.2 billion in 2017, which is an annual growth of 9.4 percent. 
A drastic increase considering the global CMO market was $4.6 billion in 2012. The company's capacity will double to 360,000 liters after its third plant is completed in 2018, as Samsung is vying to become the world's top manufacturer by 2020. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And we'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Until then, goodbye.